Good morning, my friends. Hope you're all having a good start to your day. I'm out here in the garden this morning, starting my day off right. We've got a hot day ahead of us, so get out here while I can, do a little bit of watering and observation. As you can see, we've got a beautiful sky, golden in color, the sun's just rising, and I'm starting the day off with gratitude. Just thankful to spend another day of life here in this existence. Every day brings with it opportunities to have an amazing experience in this life. So I hope that's what you have today is an amazing day. But I'm standing here right in front of one of my favorite plants growing here in my backyard food forest, the cardoon. Many people have written in asking me about this plant, either confusing it with the artichoke as it's closely related in the same family but not an artichoke or they're just curious what it is because just look at the beauty those electric purple flowers they are some of the best beneficial insect attractor flowers in my garden they bring in the bees bumblebees butterflies they are just really a very showy plant and you will see them dotted throughout my landscape as part of the overall design and they're highly functional i'm going to go over all the different things that i love about the plant briefly in today's video hopefully you get something out of it so this cardoon here has perennialized in the garden and these will perennialize in usda climate zones seven and up otherwise they can be grown as an annual and usually what happens is once they mature, they kind of dry up, die back, and then you'll start to see new plants begin to emerge at the base. In fact, I see a little one starting to grow up right here. Here's another cardoon, volunteered itself, not in the best of spots, but I'm letting it grow up just a bit before I pull it out and use it as a chop and drop plant. Look at all of this organic material, very rich in water, these stalks are loaded with water. The plant has a deep tap root, and because of that, it's mining up nutrients and minerals that the roots of other plants cannot reach. It brings those nutrients up into the leaves, into the stalks, and when I chop them and drop them throughout my garden, I'm bringing those nutrients up to the surface level where all the plant matter decomposes and feeds the plants that I'm mulching with. And I've got a couple more cardoons over here. This patch of cardoons, which reminds me of almost like a banana circle, started out with just one mature cardoon. And these are all the pups that grew up near the base into mature plants. And there's about four or five of them in this cluster. Here's a smaller one growing near the chicken coop. So cardoon is known botanically, and I love its botanical name, as Cynara cardunculus. And unlike the artichoke, which has the edible flower heads, the heads on the cardoon are not edible, but rather the actual rib of the leaves is what's consumed. Now, traditionally, the cardoon is blanched to give it a better flavor, make it even more edible. And that's done in a variety of ways. Generally, what you're going to do is cover it up with maybe a big cardboard box. The plants, by the way, don't usually get this tall. So you might be dealing with, you know, a four or five foot plant. But you can wrap it up so that it doesn't have exposure to sunlight for about three to four weeks. Dark garbage bag, cardboard. I've even seen where the plant gets chopped and dropped and then buried under some soil or sand. And after three weeks, the stalks begin to turn a whitish color. And at that point... They're ready to be prepared. So after the blanching, you're going to remove the leaf material. Just take the rib of those leaves and peel them with a peeler. Dice them up and you can use them in salads. You can use them in soups, casseroles. You can get creative with it. And here's yet another cardoon growing under my fig tree here. And another way I love to use the cardoon is as a strategic placement plant. 
so I can count on the fact that it's going to produce some nice dappled shade wherever I plant it. So if I want to plant something smaller near the base that requires a little bit of shade or could use some up front during its earlier growing years, typical plants like maybe citrus or an avocado tree like to have an overstory to help support it and shade it a little bit in the earlier years. This plant works perfect for that type of a situation. Now over here, I've got a patch of artichokes that are beginning to flower. So they're past the stage of where you would consume them. You can see that same type of electric purple flower is gonna erupt from all these flower heads here. But you can see the difference. They don't have that sharp point on each petal like the cardoon does. Now my understanding is the cardoon is gonna best thrive in a more Pacific Northwest type climate. Down south, probably too hot. It's not gonna do all that well. I don't know, we get well over 100 degrees throughout the summertime here, sometimes up to 110. My cardoons have been thriving. So it's always worth giving it a try even when the information tells you that it might not work because you may find a microclimate or you just may be in a little pocket zone somewhere in your community where you can grow certain things that other people might not have success with. So I'd encourage everybody to give the cardoon a try, whether you're going for annual or perennial, just a wonderful fast growing plant, beneficial insect attractor, makes a wonderful chop and drop, has edible qualities, easy low maintenance grower, showy plant, pretty much everything you could ask for. One word of caution, however, the cardoon can have a tendency to spread and become even somewhat invasive if you don't remove these flower heads each season, which produce the seed. Let's dig into this one. Here's and that is what the seed looks like. And you've probably seen these little carriers floating around your neighborhood from various thistles. We used to catch these as a kid, make a wish and blow them away. Well, the seeds, some of them may stay attached to these carriers and float away so they can actually go a distance. So just be aware if you're going to plant this in an area that you're not tending, so an untended garden, you could have an unintended spread. But that being said, goes for a lot of different types of plants just wanted to make mention of it so you know what you're getting into well the sun is peeking up now and a little later in the day these flowers should be covered with bees hey got a hummingbird up there And so with that, I want to thank you all for watching. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.